I'm Dr. Karen Sutton, an orthopedic surgeon in sports medicine at HSS. Today, I'll be demonstrating a suspended BTB ACL reconstruction technique using the rigid loop BTB adjustable button. This is our bone patella tendon bone graft that we're gonna be using for our suspensory ACL reconstruction. A couple key points since we're doing the suspensory fixation and we use the twister guide, a retrograde reamer. Focusing on the femoral aspect of the graft, it's really important that the femoral aspect of the graft is gonna be less than 20 millimeters in length. Here we have the graft that's 18 millimeters in length on the femoral bone side. The other key point for the femoral side in order for assuring passage through the femoral tunnel is to keep this bulleted, devoid of any extra soft tissue and so that it can pass nicely through the femoral socket. We also have the two drill holes here. It's important to have the leading drill hole slightly closer to the edge so that you can direct the bone graft accordingly, but you also don't want that drill hole to pull out through the graft. Those are the key features in your graft preparation for the BTB ACL reconstruction. The BTB graft will now be placed into the rigid loop BTB. When we place the graft into the clamp, the graft will change from this position and then it will be placed on its side and will be placed in the clamp. I'm now gonna be focusing on the tensioning suture going through the proximal hole of the graft. It doesn't matter which side you go through. Here I'm unraveling the first tensioning suture. And I'll be taking a chia passer going through the opposite black relay loop through the proximal hole of that graft. It's helpful if you pinch the end of that tensioning suture. So now the tensioning suture is through the black relay loop. Pinch the end. And then with the corresponding edge of the black relay loop, you're gonna be feeding the tensioning suture through the button. This will be through lateral side to side movements, pulling in line with the base. Then the tensioning suture gets fed through. The white suture can then be wrapped around Next, I'm gonna be passing the second tensioning suture through the kite with a needle, through the distal hole, and through the black relay loop to feed the suture through the button. This is done through lateral movement, side to side, in line with the base to feed the suture through the button. And at this point, your graft is attached to the button and the construct is together here. The final step is unwinding the suture from the base. And then you have the button in place. You release the button from the base and the graft comes out of the clamp. And you do have your final construct here. And one more aspect to prepare the button before it goes into the femoral tunnel will be to elongate the loop. The loop should be approximately 60 millimeters in length to allow for flipping the button. The construct is now complete with the rigid loop BTB. It's important now to mark what that length was for your lateral aspect of the femur, the entire bone bridge, in order to know where to flip the button. At this point, we're gonna be pulling with the blue and white, at the same time taking slack out of the other suture. So you can see the blue and white is that leading edge. And once the button is toggled, two things are done. One is tension is pulled on the graft to determine if the button is seated in place. And the second way to confirm that the button is flipped on the lateral cortex is to check fluoroscopy imaging, which I would recommend doing every time to make sure that button is flipped on that lateral cortex. The next part is then to bring the bone plug into the femoral tunnel. This is done strategically where first we'll pull on the tensioning sutures. The tensioning sutures will be alternating the white sutures as we bring the bone plug through. This is done very much in a controlled fashion. 
And as the bone plug gets closer, it's important to not have too much tension. I would have my assistant stop here. And then I would take a probe and make sure that bone plug starts to get into the tunnel. One key point as the bone plug for the femoral side of the tunnel is being pushed in with the probe. At the same time, you should also check your tibial side to make sure the tibial bone plug is going in at the same time and not at an angle. Everything should really be in line from the tensioning suture to the bone plug and then the graft as well as down to the tibial bone plug as well. After a procedure such as today's ACL reconstruction technique, typically my patients would be in a post-op brace for approximately four to six weeks with physical therapy starting in three to five days. Usually they would need crutches for around four to six weeks as well and then certainly don't forget aspirin as well as compressive stockings for DVT prophylaxis. Thank you for joining us today.